Hey guys, the Firebird is here. It's just me, and today we're going back to the beginning. Now, when I mean to the beginning, I mean back to the old days when I used to do theory videos because I haven't done one of those in a long time. So, yeah, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about well, I'm gonna be explaining how Barry Kate survived his, you know, uh, tragic and kind of shameful encounter with the humans in Dark of the Moon only to reappear in the last night. Now, while this might be a theory video, there's actually a bit of evidence hinting to how Barry Kate survived in the film, believe it or not. And the main way as to how I'm gonna explain it is to the KSI company. That's right, those guys again. But first we need to do a small recap. In Dark of the Moon, yeah, like we all know the humans, since they're so freaking OP, managed to overpower a bunch of Decepticons that were grouped together. Then the Autobots showed up and they started, you know, repelling the Decepticon menace. Now, the last time we saw Barricade in this scene, he had his leg blown up and then got shot in the face multiple times by a human. And for the longest time, we thought that was that for Barricade. He bite the dust in the most unceremonious way ever. But then, as fate will have it, Barricade will reappear for Transformers 5. And once he was in there, he didn't really do much. He was more of a background character. He was kind of just there for fan service, which, I mean, it kind of worked because people were happy about that. But at the same time, he should have had a larger role, let's be honest here. So, how did Barry get survive and manage to obtain a new body? Well, this is where the KSI part comes into play. So, as we know, most of the Age of Extinction, you know, robots, the KSI drones, are built out of dead Decepticons or dead Autobots too. We don't know how many, but supposedly majority of them are, you know, leftovers from the Decepticon army in Chicago. And quite possibly a huge bunch of them are probably also from the Driller too if you think about it, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. Now the thing that compelled me to make this video is this one scene when the Autobots are raiding the KSI facility. And if you saw the thumbnail of the video, you probably know where I'm getting at. The Oreobot, the OG himself, the mastermind behind the Michael Bay movies, and the most powerful Decepticon of all. I'm not even kidding, this is canon. Now you guys might be thinking, Fire, there's no connection between him and Barricade, you're just drunk. Well, if you pay close attention to the way Oreobot looks like and you compare him to the way the last night Barricade looks like, there is some uncanny resemblances between the two. They have the police sirens on the back, their face is extremely similar. Their body structure, well, yeah sure, the body structure is not that similar, but when it comes to how the legs and his arms look like, there's definitely a resemblance to Barricade in there. Same with the fingers, like the fingers are actually pretty resembling of Barricade. Okay, so you guys might be thinking, so what does that have to do with anything? Well, at face value, it's pretty obvious that they used the Oreobot model to basically make the Barricade model. Like, we already know that. But if you also remember, in The Last Night, Nitro Zeus also was basically a reused model of Shockwave. Well, to some degree. And in the story, well, at least the bios that they, you know, gave the Transformers websites about the characters, it mentioned that Nitro Zeus had a relation to Shockwave, like he considered him like a brother or something. So, the resemblance between Nitro Zeus and Shockwave was, in a way, at least play some kind of role to Nitro Zeus's character or his story or whatever, even though he didn't have much of one. So why can't the same thing apply to Oreobot here? So let's pretend for a second that there is a connection between Oreobot and Barricade. Now what's that connection? Well, it is my belief that Barricade was a KSI prisoner. Now if you think about it, this kind of does make a bit of sense. While they prefer killing Transformers such as, you know, uh, Ledford, Ratchet, and whatever other Decepticons they can find, they do spare some to study on them. For example, you got Brains. He was kept alive because he was small and, and for the most part harmless to the humans. Barricade was shot in the leg, so he's not gonna be able to transform anymore to escape Chicago, so that means he had to crawl while the humans and Decepticons were fighting. Either that or he just played dead. Now, I don't see like Barricade being able to escape the detection of the Autobots and the Nest Forces out of Chicago. I find that really unlikely. So, what I'm thinking that happened here is that he was probably found by the military. And then at some point he was like arrested, like the last night Decepticons. They have prisons where they keep some Decepticons alive. So it is possible that the same thing was done to some Decepticons that were found after the Chicago battle. 
After that, once KSI started experimenting on the dead Decepticons and Autobots, it is possible that KSI managed to, you know, through their military contracts, managed to get their hands on Barricade and use it for study. If you look at the KSI drones, a lot of their earlier models have a strong resemblance to like the Decepticons or like the way the protoforms used to look like. You got the red KSI drones and the two heads uh, as the prime example. While the later generations of KSI drones, not only do they look a bit more complex, but at the same time, they are also considerably stronger, like Stinger and Gavatron. Now, the Autobot gets destroyed by a couple of shots from Crosshair's gun, and that thing is like a submachine gun, those things are not gonna be particularly effective. So that means that the Oriobot basically belongs to the early generations of the KSI drone models. Now this is important because I believe that Barricade was captured or KSI managed to get a hold on him pretty early on in their development process and basically used him to study how a transformer works, like how they move, how they function, and maybe while he was kept prisoner they kind of remodel him, like they gave him a new look and they experimented on him to make him look less insect-like, like most of the Decepticons there for like the previous three Transformers movies. And this also coincides nicely with The Last Night because if you think about it, the Decepticons that appear in The Last Night, such as Dreadbot, Mohawk, Nitrosus, have a really strong... How can I say this? Uh, pre Age of Extinction look. Like, they look like the Decepticons that we used to encounter back in the day. Because in Age of Extinction and The Last Night, most, most Autobots and Decepticons have like this weird humanoid look. And strangely enough, Barricade and Megatron are the only two Decepticons in the entire film that happen to have the same look. Well, with the exception of Quintessa, but we don't count her. And when you take that into consideration, and then you apply the fact that one of them was a KSI prisoner, and that's the reason why he looks more humanoid than ever before. Then you gotta consider, did the same thing happen to Barricade? Because by the film's logic, you know, all the Decepticons looking how the Decepticons used to look like in the past first three movies, more insect-like with the exception of Barricade and Megatron, means that a similar event probably happened to Barricade and Megatron. Like, we know that Megatron came into contact with Quintessa and Quintessa gave him a new body, but what about Barricade? I doubt Quintessa will waste his time on Barricade, giving him a new body for him not to play a major role in the final battle. That's where KSI comes in. Maybe KSI got a hold of Barricade and then they upgraded him, they modified him from that insect kind of look that he had in the first in the first three movies to looking more humanoid. Because KSI was trying to make more humanoid Transformers because they were quote unquote more consumer friendly. So yeah, that's basically my theory. They kept Barricade alive as a guinea pig to test on this new way of making and building Transformers. Until that is, Gabatron broke free and maybe at some point during age during age of extinction or after age of extinction he rescued barricade from his you know captivity and then that's how you know barricade found megatron and that's why barricade is the only decepticon in the time of the last night that's you know directly serving megatron and i guess that will also explain why megatron will know about the other decepticons being in captivity because i mean megatron's been dead for like so long i doubt that he will instantly know oh yeah there's that place that the humans keep the decepticons at i should probably go there and raid it Maybe someone told him, and maybe that someone is Barricade. And once he was freed by Gabatron slash Megatron, he swore his loyalty to his master once again, and that explains why he's the only Decepticon that started directly serving under, Ga under Megatron at the moment, by the time of the last night. We're also not kind of the protoforms, because, you know, they were kind of just there as father. Before we go, shout out to our Patreons, Morris Prime. He has gained access to the Scout tier, and therefore he's entitled to a shout out from me. If you guys want to donate to my Patreon, links in the description down below. If you do so, you can get a shout out to your channel, you can do a collab with me, request your own videos, get special roles on my Discord, and stuff like that. Thank you Maurice Prime for donating, and shout out to his channel. Link to it is going to be in the description down below, as always. And go check him out, he needs all the help he can get. And if you want to shout out yourself, all you need to do is donate to my Patreon. So, yeah, it's a pretty good deal. But keep in mind, we don't force anyone. But yeah guys, that's basically my theory on how Barricade survived Dark of the Moon, became a KSI prisoner, got rescued by Galvatron, and managed to come back with a, with a, in an entirely new body by the time of the last night. What do you guys think of this theory? Do you guys agree with me? Do you guys disagree with me? Do you guys I'm stretching it a little? Personally, I think there's a strong connection between the Oreo bot and Megatron, which could 
indicate to barricade being linked to KSI in some way or another. And at the same time, when you take my theory into account, it kind of fits quite nice if you think about it. It explains how barricade survived, what happened to him, how he got rescued by Gavatron, and how he gained his new body. Like, it all fits quite nicely. I think this theory, like, really, really works. But if you have something to debunk it, or if you have a better theory yourself, feel free to explain it to me or to tell me in the comments down below. Anyways guys, that's it for this video, this theory video, it's been a long time since I did one of these. I might make a few more in the future, but to be fair, I kind of already said most of the stuff that there is to say about the Bayverse and some of the Nightverse, so I'm probably not gonna make these very often, unless you guys have some suggestions, then I might look into them. But anyways guys, that's it for this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe guys.